Hey one, hey all, welcome to Monday. Welcome back to Countdown Day. And this one is gonna be real personal for us collectors because it's going to be our pet peeves. Our biggest pet peeves. In fact, as voted on by fans, this will be the top 10 pet peeves in collecting. That's gonna be our focus this time around in the latest GotBot Counts Down. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light up my baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that is in the description down below also in the description down below and if you are in a position to help the channel to grow you can use the donate link check us out on patreon see what we have to offer to you through spring or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member so we know as collectors whether it's transformers or gi joe or star wars or stamps or plates or old cars whatever it is you collect we know that there are pet peeves now to be fair a lot of these naturally relate specifically to Transformers, since that's what we do around here. But some of these are pretty general that I think a lot of collectors, when they hear, will kind of nod their head and say, yeah, it's like that in my world too. It's like that in my collection as well. Uh, we only have one honorable mention this week, which is very rare, but it's because of the way the, the votes went. And that honorable mention goes to hollowness. Specifically with Transformers, of course. Hollowness is a rough one. Um, it went away for some time with the War for Cybertron trilogy, but I would say in the Legacy line and whatnot, we are starting to see it creep back a bit. Sometimes it's in the arms. Sometimes it's in the legs. Sometimes it's the back of the legs. Sometimes it's the back of the head if you look at some of the core class offerings. So, yeah, Hollowness, honorable mention, did not make the actual list. So, what did you know what we're going to do? We're going to do like we always do. And we're going to kick things off, my friends, with number 10 first. Coming in at number 10, we have Always Searching for the Best Offering. It's kind of a continuous hunt, if you will, right? Because every time a new product comes out, Sometimes people will say this is as good as it gets only for something to get released that bears that same name not too long after. Case in point, a lot of people said the Classics Optimus Prime, the Voyager Classics Optimus Prime. Man, this is the best Optimus Prime going. This is the best one we're ever going to get until we got... For example, the Combiner Wars. Some people said that one was better. It could combine and uh, the torso looked a little more like Optimus. And then after that, some people said the proportions were pretty wonky. We got something, for example, like uh, the, the Siege Voyager. And people said, wow, that's great. The truck's a little Cybertronian, but man, that robot really nails it. And then we got the Earthrise. And same with MP. You had MP01, then MP10, then MP44. Which one is perfect? Which one is ideal? Is there ever such a thing? Or does it get to a point where you, as a collector, have to say to yourself, this is the right version for me? Maybe you'll never say that. Maybe you'll always be hunting for that white whale, for that ideal, for that perfect. Ever searching for the best offering of a character? That is what takes the number 10 slot. Number nine is a very interesting one. Number nine is people that complain. So we all know, myself included a lot, that there's a lot of gripes that fans and collectors have. People that voted for this said they don't like when people complain about a lack of paint or a lack of articulation for figures meant for children. Um, I mean, I don't know, do kids deserve subpar products? Maybe. Uh, don't complain about exclusives. Exclusives are great because it means we get more than just what's in a particular wave. Don't complain about pricing because at least we're getting it. Don't complain about having to hunt. Take joy in it. Don't complain about uh, what you don't like about something. Instead, just focus on the positive and focus on loving the franchise. Whether you agree with that slant, stance, or not, enough fans did that your pet peeve 
being other fans complaining, that is what took the number 9 slot. After a somewhat esoteric number 9, a little, little bit too meta for some people maybe, right? We have at number 8 something that is very, very straightforward and it is Poor QC. Specifically votes for Poor QC of Transformers and some other offerings by the way. Uh, include tolerances on joints, incorrect types of joints used. People didn't really elaborate on what they mean by incorrect. I assume that would be something like uh, a friction hinge where maybe a ratchet should have been used or um, I don't know, using a pinned hinge when a ball peg would have done or some such thing. Uh, some people also said that uh, within the realm of QC, this would be things like paint uh, blemishes and issues, missing paint, um, and like misassembly errors, you know, two left legs or two right arms, those sort of things, or missing wing tips on a plane, something of that nature. QC problems, misassembly problems, that is what takes the number eight slot. Now, number seven is one that's more recent, and I would say one that's troubling with yellowing. People paying top dollar, good dollar for a lot of products that have yellowed. The list so far includes, but is certainly not limited to, the uh, Selects Voyager G2 Megatron, the Netflix Soundwave, the uh, Kingdom Cyclonus, the oddly um, Origins Bumblebee going less yellow, which is pretty strange. Uh, it The yellowing issue has been found on the Selects uh, Sandstorm, on the Cyberverse Hammerbite, on, oh my goodness, what else have I seen it on? Um, on the Earthrise Megatron, and ever so many more. It's become a real big problem. I've even seen it on some panels on the Legacy Menasaur, and I saw it on the reverse, the back, of a thigh panel, I believe it was, for the Titan Class Cybertron Metroplex. Yellowing, real issue that really affects more um, product than it should, especially for the price that us fans pay. The yellowing issue, it takes the number seven slot. Number six is one that I think any collector of anything can relate to. It's also uh, kind of a, the funniest one I think on the list and it's dust. Dusting, right? So many collectors and collections are displayed in so many ways. Naturally, dust settles and you need to periodically clean it. I'm not going to lie, I rarely clean mine. I tend to clean Starscream Wife's small collection a lot more than my own. To be fair though, mine don't usually get too much dust build up on it because I tend to be using them for the countdowns, I tend to be using them sometimes for the shows I, uh, on Thursday nights, and I tend to be using them for stop motion animation and for comparisons and reviews. So I'm sort of always sort of handling things so they're not there for years on end. But naturally, it is an issue that all fans have to deal with on your shelves and on the things you collect, whatever it is you collect. Even if it's Granny's old spoons. She had, you know, she had those spoons in that uh, wooden thing that was on the wall. We all know what I'm talking about with those, you know, she had a spoon from every state or every province, depending on where you live, right? We know it. Even those got to be cleaned time to time because of dust. That's right. The scourge that is dust and the work that is dusting. That's what takes the number six slot. And now a hush falls over the crowd and we are at the most coveted of all locations, the ever popular halfway mark. And at the halfway mark this time, we have something that every single collector can relate to. You always want more, you always want to build the collection, you always want to have what you see as your quintessential complete collection. But then something happens and that something is called Space limitation. Some people don't have it. Some people are very lucky. They can have a whole room or a whole basement or an entire attic or something dedicated to their entire collection. Eventually, they may run out of space. But many of us live in smaller abodes, smaller accommodations, and share it with many other people. The end result? Sometimes we run out of space. If you're lucky, you can add more shelving. You can rearrange something. But eventually, Everyone is going to reach a point where there's just no more wall space left. There's no more that you can hang from the ceiling. And now your floor is down to being hallways because of all of those glorious boxes and all of that wonderful product. Sooner or later, all of us have 
as collectors, all of us as collectors, there we go, that's the sentence I was trying to say, will have to face the problem of space limitations, whether it happens quickly or whether it happens two decades from now. Whenever it does happen to you, I hope you find the best solution that works for you and your collection. We all feel that pain one time or another. Space limitations. That's what takes the number five slot. Number four is an obvious one affecting collectors over recent years, and it's price hikes. So many have already been priced out of a lot of the hobbies that they know and that they love. And some people have said, oh, it's inflation. If this is not inflation. If you understand inflation and how it works, even with hyperinflation, you can see that the price hikes that we've gotten, it's more than inflation. It's largely promises to investors that, quite frankly, in a recovering economy, probably aren't realistic goals to obtain. That is a debate for another time. But regardless of that, enough fans feel like, you know what, prices on not just Transformers, but a number of collectible items is putting them out of reach. Whether that's because they think the value just isn't there or because real life necessities of life like food and fuel and electricity is now taking a bigger chunk of their paycheck, leaving less for luxuries, well, you know what, everybody has different reasons, but enough fans are feeling the pinch, feeling the squeeze, and having to pick and choose that they really consider the price hikes as a deterrent to collecting whatever they want, as a deterrent to expanding their collecting journey. I feel it too. I think we all do, to one degree or another. Needless to say, fans feel the pinch, and that's why price hikes took the number four slot. Top three, number three, easy one, scalpers. Scalpers are the bane of any collecting community. They go out, they scoop up product, and then they sell it for grossly inflated prices. Some scalpers sell, uh, you know, th that product to, you know, people that they really know are going to pay anything for it, and then they use that to kind of build a legitimate business, or they use that to uh, build their YouTube channels because now they have things first even though it's ill-gotten gains. Scalping often comes in two forms either from theft and somebody overselling or from something being released and a scalper being Johnny on the spot as they say to go and buy all the copies of it. I remember many years ago when I worked at Walmart of all places in toys and at the time Pokemon cards were gigantic and we rarely had them in stock but we did this one time and when we did this one time I remember a lady coming and they were on an end cap as she put her arm in behind and swiped them all into her cart and the next row all into her cart. She bought literally everyone there. Why? Obviously now I know and you know that her intention was to go out and sell them on an aftermarket, overpricing things. There's also another added problem here that some fans explained and said, sometimes what you get is fellow collectors who will buy up all the product and then try to dictate the price as something inflated as well. In other words, when fan becomes scalper, that's dangerous territory. Scalping overcharging, overpaying. It's a problem not just in the Transformers community, but in an awful lot of collecting communities. And it's one that we, as a community, need to really nip in the bud and squelch now before it becomes worse. Scalpers take the number three slot. Number two pet peeve of collectors is poor distribution. Some places get a ton of product. Some places get none of product. A lot of overseas places um, really feel like they are left out very often from what North America gets. Uh, I, I will go back to Combiner Wars. I believe the UK never did get Wave 2. Here in Canada, after Wave 1 of Legacy came out, Wave 2 was pretty much non-existent and Wave 3 only showed up about a month or so ago. So very poor distribution over the last year. But at the same time, in my neck of the woods, for example, we had many of the Velocitron Speedia 500 Galaxy shuttles. So many that they're still riding on the shelf right now, as of this recording. Overpriced as well here in my neck of the woods. 80 bucks. Whew. But some places never saw him first nor last. A lot of people pointed out uh, to things like scarcity economics. 
being part of poor distribution. If you make a limited number of something, yeah, it probably increases the value, but it means that getting it becomes very difficult. It means trying to secure a pre-order becomes difficult. It means trying to go out and see if you can wait until a sale comes becomes difficult because now there's just not enough product out there. It's a tangled web distribution that relates to a number of other things, including production numbers and including intent. Poor distribution. If you're making the things, just put them out in the world for fans to buy. You're leaving money and sales on the table. It's not a great thing. Fans feel it. Fans don't like it when they feel left out. Poor distribution strikes far too often and it takes the number two slot. And number one pet peeve for collectors as voted on by fans all across social media is exclusive overuse. Now, what do I mean by that? There was a time when something being exclusive meant that it was special. It might be a Botcon set that focuses on uh, the Stunticon job, or it might be um, a Botcon set that focuses on Machine Wars. That makes sense for exclusive. I will even say in the modern age, things like the Selects G2 Sandstorm or Rotor Storm make sense as an exclusive. The problem that I think fans are referring to here based on what they said to me in their votes is when exclusives include A, mainline characters, um, and I, when I elaborated on that or when I asked them to elaborate on that, they said anything that appeared in the cartoon at the very least. And B, um, when you have a set that gets broken up for exclusive exclusivity. So that's part of the problem with exclusives. So the examples given, for example, would be the Coneheads, right? You could not get the, um, I guess, Earthrise Coneheads very easily. Thrust was a Target exclusive in the U.S. In Canada, he was a Toys R Us exclusive. Many overseas countries never ever did get him because no store carried those exclusives. As well, the other two in that set was an Amazon exclusive. Amazon, outside of the US, is no notorious for not filling pre-orders. In fact, in Canada, exactly zero Amazon pre-orders for the Coneheads 2-pack were filled. That's why we're getting a reissue now of Dirge in Legacy, though at a higher price, to be fair. Unfilled pre-orders, store exclusive pre-orders to stores only in one country, notably the United States, and then no announcement as to how it will be available worldwide. Entire countries not getting exclusives. Specifically, the UK was pointed out to me, as was Australia. You see something you love, and then the next announcement is, oh, this is going to be an exclusive to Pulse, for example. Newsflash, Hasbro Pulse does not service everywhere. And some places it does service, offer such limited shipping, that it makes it a price prohibitive venture. It's a, it's a slippery slope with exclusives. There's a place for them to work, but then there's a place where they're overextended and really just serve to alienate fans. And there you go, man. 10 down to 1 once again. We had some doozies on this list for pet peeves of fans. Just in bullet point form here, uh, always having to hunt for the best offering was number 10. Um, People complaining, other people complaining about complaints um, is number nine. Poor QC is number eight. The yellowing issue is number seven. Dust and dusting at number six. Uh, limited space to place, display, store your collection at number five. Um, price hikes, number four. Uh, da, 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 where am I? Hold on, I have to find number three here. Um, scalpers, that's number three. Number two, poor distribution. And number one, the overuse of exclusives. Yeah, it was quite a list, but that's not everything that people voted for. Some other uh, great ones that had votes include, let me see what I can find here. Um, the inability to di disassemble figures so that you can um, customize them. Uh, that happens a lot with pinned joints. It's uh, not easy to remove a pin. Uh, a lot of people would prefer either being able to pop something off of a ball peg or the use of screws. Um, theft, another big one. Wanting a G1 Megatron very badly. Don't think it's going to happen. Think you're think you're you're wishing against wishing there. Um, P 
people not understanding their collection. They see it and they think it's weird that you have so many of this one thing or so many Transformers or so many G.I. Joes. Why don't you just sell it off? What, what are you keeping that for? They don't, they don't get it. Um, swaps, store swaps or stolen stuff and something else put back in. That was a, a lens cap. Pardon the noise. Yeah, store swaps, we see it a lot. It's supposed to be Siege Optimus Prime, but really it's like that old deluxe that twists around. Or it's supposed to be the new uh, Kingdom Wheeljack, and it's the Generations Wheeljack. Um, in conjunction with swaps, stolen parts now in windowless packaging, namely heads. Which, by the way, ties back to scalping. Word is that in a lot of cases what's happening is somebody is stealing a head or an arm or a chest plate, as I've heard for the Rise of the Beast Optimus, and uh, then going back later to buy the product or going back later and taking that up to the cash and saying, hey, this is missing a piece. Can I get a deal on it? They'll get a deal on it, go outside the store, take the head or the missing piece from their pocket, pop it back on. It's, it's dirty pool. And then often not keeping it, taking that thing that they essentially stole because of their kind of shenanigans and then overcharging for it. It's, it's a wild time to be a collector, man. Um, inflation, earthquakes being a pet peeve. That was an interesting one. Certainly would feed into space limitations for displaying your collection too, I would imagine. Uh, what else do we have here? G too many G1 rehashes. Uh, characters that have been overdone too often while others sit with no representation of them. For example, how long have we had to wait for a DevCon? How many years did we wait for a proper RC? How long did we wait for Quintessons? But, in the same vein, how many Bumblebees did we get? How many Optimus Primes did we get? How many Prowls did we get? How many Jazzes did we get? And so on and so forth. Um, let's see... All of the Target Masters not having proper Battle Master partners. Looking at you, Needle Nose. Looking at you, Point Blank. Um, let's see. Having to buy two of everything. Some people do it to take one out and leave one in package or one in each mode. Um, street dates being broken specifically by Target, but then when you take the thing up to the cash, they won't sell it to you because it shouldn't have been out on the shelf. Uh... <laughs> The need to buy upgrades to complete a product that you just overpaid for to begin with. So when you buy something and it has a bunch of hollowness, and then you have to go out and buy an upgrade kit to fill in all of those hollow bits. As people said, maybe it should have just been made correctly to begin with. Also, um, PvP had a vote. Poor Hasbro policy in general. Um, too many mold reuses. Combiner Wars was brutal for it. Uh, the hunt itself, having to go out and drive around. Some people said that that's their biggest pet peeve. Uh, lazy engineering, a.k.a. shell formers ex uh, explicitly. Yeah, shell formers, they're not great. Translucent plastic used for hinges, or clear plastic used for hinges. That's prone to breakage. Um, and... Let's see overdone characters which i mentioned earlier that and even more fans got gripes some of them legitimate some of them not where do you fall on the spectrum maybe you love everything and have no gripes and if so man i'm happy for you i wish i could be like you thanks for coming by giving me some of your extremely valuable time i do know how important it is to you if you're in a position to help the channel to grow you can use the donate link check us out on patreon see what we have to offer to you through spring or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member Please hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel, and never ever forget for one second, not for one second, that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres, or the old fashioned way, right here, inside the videos.